G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and uh, yeah, I'm in a mess. I've got fairing going on inside that cabin there. It is like a toxic wasteland in there at the moment. As you can see, we've been working hard on the underside of the uh, of the, the cockpit roof here and got a lot of stuff happening and the helm station's all integrated. And this video is going to basically touch on the supports of this whole rooftop here, how I'm intending to support it and, uh, and make sure that it's structurally sound. Now, I do need Need to bring up a very touchy subject uh, this site is in fact a build site it is a construction zone and I am in an industrial area where we need to make sure that we adhere to some serious safety standards both with regard to insurance and also uh, and, and also safety so one of the things that has come to pass over the last few months and we're at the end of our holiday season which means that our traffic into the area is going to be uh, be less than it has been for the last six months but over the last six months I've had around 80 visitors come to visit the boat here it is uh, so good that everyone's so fascinated and interested in the project in, interested in the progress and uh, and how Janet and I are piecing this thing together piece by piece on our own. Now that actually brings me to the hardest point of all. We are now at the point uh, with regard to the industrial site here, with regard to the safety that's on site here, that we are going to uh, stop having visitors on the boat. It has become uh, an issue for us where we have to keep the site incredibly clean and while I'm trying to fare and keep dust out of the boat I'm having visitors traipse through the boat it's uh, it's getting a little bit hard and it's hard to work around that as well uh, thinking about whether my whether my visitors are safe whether I'm safe whether Janet and I are safe and it is involving a lot of my time so and the worst part is that I'm doing the video series so everyone can follow the progress and uh, and still we're getting friends and and visitors and, and viewers and, and patrons you know we love everybody coming here but we're going to limit it if you need to come and visit you must contact me well in advance to make sure that I'm clear because it's just not a clear sight right now this is going to get worse before it gets better this area in the back here has taken some months of preparation and uh, and I'm not done yet so if I can just ask you guys hold off on visiting if you're in the area please you know give me a DM through Facebook or through Instagram and uh, and if I'm free I'll invite you on, but uh, I've just got to make that call right now. I'm not going to be accepting any visitors anymore. We'll have, uh, you know, Janet and myself and, and Sam. My son's going to come down to help me work. Zach and Ellen have been back this week, and that has brought it to light that, you know, I'm just not getting as far forward as I need to, and the, and the, the, the fact that I'm getting so many visitors is really starting to hamper my efforts as to moving forward in a, in a productive way. And, uh, you know, I, I am at work, and although most people don't consider me to be at work I'm at work and I'm trying to do my job as best I can and and I just need to be really sharp and as I get older I'm losing the ability to be able to remember where I was at thanks guys really appreciate the interest in the project keep on following and subscribe and share it out to your friends and uh, you know and follow along on YouTube that's what it's there for it's there to inform you as to where we're at thanks guys let's get into it I have been deliberating on how to support our cockpit roof. The first thing, it needs to be super strong and it needs to look good. And uh, although I have a mould for a huge Targa to put on this boat, I'm not a big fan of them. I do love the idea of the Targa, but the one that I have, honestly, it's going to be much work to make it. It is a monster. And, uh, and the amount of money and carbon and stuff that I'll have to put in it to make sure that it's strong enough to carry a traveller maybe it's not gonna be worth it but uh young zach i was talking to him the other day and he came up with this brilliant solution he has a six and a half meter length of 100 mil 316 stainless tube and he's offered to give it to me reasonably cheap so fortunately i've got hold of it and i've just cut two pieces 316 and this is going to have to have some flanges and stuff uh, glued to it, but I'll have to find a fabricator to to make up the necessary attachments and it's going to include a fish plate and some backing. Now my intention is to place it here and it will go up and into a cord section of this roof and it's not just going to sit on the top of the lounge. Now this settee uh, handrail here or section here is not strong enough to support something like that and obviously all the loads that this roof is going to have wind um, traveler german shooting not really sure how i'm going to do that yet 
Uh, but if I pass it through a hole there, through this region here, I can actually bolt it to the back of the boat uh, with some type of fish plate U-bolts. Not really sure how to do that, but that will be probably a stainless plate here somewhere, bolting onto another stainless plate inside that's actually welded to this guy. And then I can get a flange made up that will be fitted here. Uh, either an elongated oblong shape, probably would be nicer. And then when I come up here, I can put a blind flange on the cord section of the roof here and then possibly one up on the top so that it's bolted all the way through all the way down into the compartment below now you probably think that's not going to be strong enough that there is that thick and it is solid glass with core and then more solid glass and it's about um three layers of the bulkhead in there as well so the whole thing's tied into this large compression bulkhead that runs transversely across the back of the boat here and uh and it's more than strong enough trust me now i have a problem <laughs> because this is last to the boat i can't get it in straight i don't want to cut a hole in the cockpit roof obviously because i've got to pour that and i still want the solid glass on the top so what i have to do is get this in oh no Bad bag, oh, nothing's easy. <laughs> I've cut this to 2100 millimeters, I only need 2000 millimeters. Um, but my tent is gonna give me some grief. Now, I did have the need for it to go in on an angle in any case, but I wasn't factoring on the tent. <laughs> I think. I think once I get it in, it'll be all right. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna put a hole saw in here. I'm gonna to try to put it in on this angle. If it doesn't go on this angle, it'll go in on this angle, but my tent's not high enough. I've got two worst case scenarios. I pull the tent back to get the pole in, or, and now I've gotta get it back out again, or I roll the boat out to get it in to test fit it. And then I roll the boat back in for a few months while I get the stainless done and then I roll it back out again to get it fitted. Yeah, I think the pulling the tent back is gonna be the game, but I'm gonna give it a crack getting it in. And I'm sort of hoping that by the time I wiggle it in, I'm gonna... so I'm gonna have to overlise this hole a bit to get enough clearance to get it in. But I'm probably going to get some sort of an oval an oblong shaped with a rounded edge fish plate made here that bolts onto a plate underneath. Um, there's a lot of complicated sort of geometry inside there, but the nice thing is I'll be able to bolt it to here and a plate down here with four big stainless bolts going into the back. But yeah, we'll get this hole cut. Let's see how we go. I can't uh, imagine this going in easily, but it never does, does it? <laughs>
<laughs> it's hitting him. It's in, but it's not in. <laughs> this needs to be trimmed off anyway, but I wasn't hoping to do that, but I'm gonna have to do it now. Right, 45 minutes later, I've had to resort to some drastic action, and that is to raise this acro prop and <laughs> cut out a section of that hard top. Now that hard top is going to get trimmed back anyway to level with this. So I did have a bit of latitude there, um, but <laughs> not as much as I thought I was gonna have. Now that is gonna go in now. Um, I've raised that hard top around about probably eight inches with the acro prop, and I'm gonna have to lower it back down because now it's on an angle here. But the nice thing is I can actually raise it up because there's enough spring in it to be able to do that. And I'll have to do it on the other side. I'm sort of hoping that the other side's almost as symmetrical because, um, yeah, that has not been an easy task. You can see the, the case of the uh, overlies hole that I've had to put in here. Now, when it comes to actually fitting the actual part, it's going to have a steel plate welded to the back of it. So I'm gonna to have to butcher some of this and then repair it once it goes in, uh, tied it up. But I just have to get it in place so I can get some measurements. Let's go in, whether I like it or not. And uh, we must come out of it. Oh, it's just honestly. All right, here we go. We're in. I'm gonna get a good look at what it's gonna look like now. All right, so that is uh, it's gonna look something like that. <laughs> I've got to work out how I'm gonna hold that there. Put in a block of wood screwed to the to the base of the thing. I'm just wondering how many swear words I can string into a sentence. Um, I've been inside trying to put a block under this thing on my own. Oh, why don't I just ring Janet and say, come up and hold this for me. But I always try to do it on my own and then I just swear like a bastard. What uh, it looks like in here. So we're down in the aft cabin obviously. And we to go across the uh, across the engine bed. We we'll go all the way across here, and uh, this is a very familiar place for myself and for Zach. We've both been in here a lot, and uh, I'm sort of coming to the end of being in here because I'm just breaking over it. But yeah, so up in here, just it's pretty dark. But up in here, we've got the poles coming down. I can make a base plate that's actually going to screw to the outside of the boat here and uh, and and basically secure that in place. I might actually refilm this, but yeah, you can see what I'm aiming for here. I, I think that's gonna be heaps strong enough. That's gonna be so strong. Um, I mean, wow. You can, you can sort of see the base of it up in there. Um, what's awesome about that is that is gonna give me one big mother conduit to run solar uh, aerials anything I want down into that. I've just got to work out a way, maybe a scan strut fitting up on the top of it to bring, um, you know, things like aerials and uh, and solar up through it. And then I can bring them all down here, feed them into conduits as I need to. Happy with that uh, that solution. That's going to be a bit of a retrofit to get it in, but that's a winner. Well, that's one damn ugly hole, but nothing that can't be repaired. Um, once it's in place, I can actually glass around that and uh, fill that hole so there's going to be no leakage. Now, over here, I've just measured it out. It's actually going to fit exactly this hole here I drilled when I demolded the deck. I needed to get some water in, so I actually did a hole saw into it and, uh, and got a lever in to try to release all this because it was sticking. But basically, the hole is going to be right there. <laughs> <laughs> right over that stinking hole. And that's going to be overlized so that I can get it in exactly the same position as that. And man, that is just going to look so good. Once I get rid of these acro props, you guys are going to get very excited when you start to see all this bling that I've got. And I've got tons of it. Uh, Jan and I have spent everything we own to finish this boat. It's, uh, it's, it's really hurting, but you never start a boat unless you know you can afford it. And, uh, and you know, we're very fortunate that we've gotten to this stage. Uh, I see a lot of guys get halfway through a build and just have to stop because either they lose interest or they lose enough money to do it. Uh, Janet and I are at the other end of life. We've just got our second child through uni. 
through school and uh, and they're on their way and you know that's time for us to have time to to you know do what we want to do we've uh, we've done our bit and uh, and we're going to be doing our bit a long time into the future because we absolutely love our kids but you know here we are drilling another massive hole in the boat and uh, and I'm bloody excited about getting this bit of bling into the boat and uh, start to design how I'm going to integrate this whole thing together All right, so the filth of this boat is absolutely filthy up here, but I've got my second-hand pulpits. They're going to have to be modified, uh, but I'll get on to that. And we'll take a walk down the back, and now that I've got these fitted, um, let me know what you think, because once these acro props are gone, and we've got these big stainless bars fitted, now that roof is going to come down about an inch, but I think the blend of the older style davits and this newer stainless post, you can use them as conduit runs for solar and the like. But wow, what a look. I'm pretty impressed. Oh, I think it, that's just absolutely brilliant. Um, they're gonna be a lot easier to integrate than a bloody Targa. Deep down inside, I'd much prefer to just have simple lines. I'm not blocking my view. And, uh, and I'm really, really happy. Mate, Zach, master stroke, mate. Great suggestion and uh, so, so glad to have gotten hold of that. I'm gonna to have to find a fabricator to do the stainless welding. Gonna to have to make up some flanges, some blind flanges, also a ring flange to go around the bottom there where it meets the lounge suite. And as I said earlier, that's actually all the way in, about two and a half feet in, and that's going to be bolted to the back of the boat. So there's not gonna be any chance of any movement and the support is just more than adequate for what I've got up here. I'm about to go up, I'm gonna take it up onto the boat. I'm gonna sit it in place. Tomorrow morning I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna glue it in place. I'm so excited to have this bastard of a thing. Right, that's a big hole. And as you can see, I've done all the prep work required to join my helm station into this area here. I've actually brought it up. It's uh, down here and I'm gonna carry it up, get it in place. This is the last time I'm gonna lift this stinker up into here. It's very, very awkward. That looks much better. <laughs> I'm very, very happy to see that going. Uh, once that's polished, it's actually making the rest of the boat look dirty. So now I've got to polish the whole boat to match my helm station. But yeah, that's in. Um, I'll have to do a little bit of a fiddle to get it to fit properly. But yeah, it's, uh, it's there and tomorrow I can start to uh, put it in place and get it all integrated properly. I've just glued in this helm console. As you can see there, I've actually epoxied it in place. Uh, I've put a bead of epoxy, all thickened epoxy all the way around it. It's now fully integrated into the boat. There's going to be tons of tabbing to go on inside, line box in behind the helm, uh, all the way around in the underside. So the nice thing is I can get it all integrated now and locked in place. A little bit of a look at it from up here, walking around up on the cockpit roof. It's been a stinker of a job, but you know, it's just one of those things. It's uh, well worth the effort once you put the effort in. Well, good morning. It's the day after Boxing Day <laughs> and it's quiet. There's no one here for two weeks. I've got free reign for two weeks in uh, the industrial state. I always look forward to Christmas time because I can get to work and I don't have to worry about whether I'm affecting anybody else with noise or whatever. And, uh, and although it is an industrial state, we try to be pretty considerate of our neighbours. Now, I'm on a press at the moment to get as much done for the next couple of weeks because Zach is coming back uh, in about 10 days' time to help me finish off the complete wiring system. We're not going to get it totally done. We're going to get it basically to the point where we can turn devices on and that's really, really critical. I can do all the extra sort of accessory wiring at the end, but we want to make sure this system is functioning. It's all uh, safe and, and the like. And you know, Zach's really good with the electrics. He spends his whole life fixing boats. He does really understand the DC systems. Now, today, the helm station went in last week, bloody excited. I'm like, I've, I've actually gotten used to it. I want to uh, do something else big because I'm really excited about how good that looks, but it's not finished. I've been working inside here on 
the helm, uh, basically the helm pump support. Now I've had to put an extra support in there, a ring which I've showed you, but the next part is I need to laminate this whole thing in together. So all of these joins here where it's glued. Now, a lot of companies would just say that's good enough, putting epoxy and gluing it together, but I personally don't think so. Remembering this has got a lot of load, uh, I'm going to tab the entire margins of everything and peel ply it so that every single part of this helm station is laminated in to place to form the structure of the boat. And as you can see, the geometry is actually providing a ton of structure. I've lost a bit of structure here, but I'm regaining it here. And this is actually stronger than the actual boat itself. This uh, this winch plinth is, is about an inch thick of solid glass. And uh, once that's tied back into the actual deck, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems. The only issue is I've gotta sit up here on my knees with my head that barely fits in here and laminate all of this joint in here. And I'll be glad to get it done. So the sooner I get it done, the better to be honest, and uh, it's gonna be pretty uncomfortable. I'm gonna to have to sit up on this uh, fridge cabinet on my knees and basically reach down and I can only just reach. But anyway, I'll get it done and then uh, I can move on and then I can start to think about putting in the additional uh, wall that I have there because I can't put that in until I get all this laminated. Now, I may actually remove this window. It's been sitting here for some time. I'm gonna take it out. I don't wanna splash it with, um, with, uh, with resin. Well, that was a pretty successful morning. I've got all of the helm console tabbed in from the inside, which was pretty exciting. I got all of it done down into the bowels of the uh, of the helm station, and basically it's now ready to pull all the peel ply off, and then I can put in my other shelf. I needed to get all of that done so that I can get in there to uh, get the flow coating and everything done, and essentially I need to try to flow coat this area here before I put in my petition wall the rest of it I can pretty much do uh, later on through the uh, through the hatch but there's no way I can flow coat down in there without having uh, access to it because uh, yeah it's, it's just not doable so I'm gonna do it that way so yeah I get all this peel ply pulled off and as you can see I've actually laminated around the conduit here which is my intention all the way along was to glass these things in as much as possible and by doing that I'm actually eliminating squeak problems. So we don't want any squeaking. PVC tends to squeak if it's not fitting correctly. It's already physically epoxied in, but then once you make a glass tube around it, um, there's no chance of it ever moving. And obviously we don't want any sort of uh, any sort of movement. The only thing you do have to watch, and I've actually noticed this a lot of the time when I'm working with PVC, is if you do fiberglass onto it, invariably it will change shape slightly. It actually crushes because the heat of the exothermic reaction between the resin and the matrix uh, creates a bit of a shrinking effect. So I have lost a little bit of area there, but it's you know beautiful and tight, and I'll be able to tidy that right up and make that look like it never happened. Yeah, so that's a bit messy, but once I remove all this peel ply, you're gonna see that it actually looks really, really nice and tidy. Couple little areas here where it's been integrated in, just get standing off, still pretty green, so I can still trim that off pretty quickly. Just a Stanley knife is all you need. And uh, this will all have to be cored and filled with um, my vinyl ester and cabasil and cotton flock. Obviously, we don't want any area to be prone to delamination and any moisture that gets in from outside the windows could potentially get in there and delaminate. As you can see, it's all resin filled. The foam is fully resin filled. And, uh, and that's the benefit of sort of the way that I've built this boat is I've laid every millimetre by hand ensuring there's tonnes of resin in it. Uh, probably a little bit heavier than it probably would have liked, but you know, that's the way it is. And to be honest, this is not a high performance catamaran. There is a tonne of talk around about high performance catamarans. And you know, that's a, a good marketing aspect. Um, you can always sail a, a high performance catamaran slowly, but you can't sail a non high performance catamaran or a, you know, a cruising cat like this fast. Well, not sure I want to go that fast, to be honest. I've been out in the sea when it's been pretty wild, and uh, and it's nice, you know, seven, eight knots is a nice speed. Any faster than that, you're starting to get a bit of exhilaration, and uh, and you can do damage to rigging. So, you know, we were never building this as a performance catamaran. Although I am keeping the weight down, it's still a big boat, and uh, we have a lot of space. We've got very, very comfortable living areas. And, well, my thinking is that, uh, you know, I'm a bit older now. I don't really need the acceleration. I've had that all my life. I just need something that's going to be safe and comfortable for our family. 
and and obviously we want good living space. I don't want uh, tight little cabins to be uh, trying to, to get into when I'm a bit older as well. So yeah, so everything here has been built with uh, you know top quality in mind, and you can see this geometry of this space here. I mean, that's taken so much work to get to this stage. And as you can see, I've got a little bit more tabbing to do here. I just ran out of steam.